Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Sue and today I'm going to do another page in my prompt journal. This one is the Create a Page with Butterflies. Now I thought I'd make it a little bit difficult for myself. Um, I've been kind of playing around with my watercolours so I thought, you know what, I want to use watercolours for this. Um, so what I thought I'd do, I'd create a background with the watercolours and I'm going to use some of the butterflies that I have in my stash. I have a plastic packet here full of various butterflies. Um, and I also have this, which I must have made for something a while ago and not used it. So I think I might use that on there as well somehow. Um, because part of this, uh, the reason I wanted to do the prompt journal was to use up some of my stash. It was also to, to use techniques or try things that I don't always do. So I'm thinking this one will cover kind of both those things. Now these butterflies here, these were made by sticking a napkin onto uh, just cardboard. So I'm thinking I'll, I might use one of those. I've also got these three dimensional ones which I'm not sure if I use those because the journal's already going to be pretty thick so I'm not sure about those. I do have these which I don't really think are appropriate for this either. Um, I've got these which I like but I, I don't know, I don't know. So I'm just having a look for what I've got. Um, I do have those. I've got these too. I've got quite a lot to be honest. Um, I've got those and I've got different different stickers. I think they might be similar to what's... no, slightly different. So I've got all these different stickers. This one was a scrapbook paper with butterflies. So as you can see, I've got quite a selection. Um, I've even got smaller ones here. What have I got? Uh, just a magazine one. Um, this one, I don't think it's a sticker, I think it's just vellum, I'm not sure. There's some sort of a plastic coating on there, so I'll have to have to have a look with that one. And of course I've got these little, more sti I've got cutouts from magazines in there, I've got these little ones. So as you can see, I've got tons. I like butterflies. That's a printable from somewhere. There's also more in here too. Uh, that's a that's a wooden three-dimensional um, sticker that I've painted at some point. I've got some wooden button ones. I've got um, that one's obviously come off the other packet. So I've got a few here. So what I might do actually is another loose one. So what I might do is just quickly go through, pick a few, and work out spacings on the page. What I'm thinking is doing squares on the page of the different colours in blue and that will be my background so possibly not blue ones so I quite like that one as a centre point because it's big um, well that one I quite like this one so maybe although that's blue so that's not going to really work well um, what else have I got? I've got a few in here some of these are moths, I think, as well. Um, that one's probably... I'm thinking maybe use the smaller ones so I can get more on the page. Um, I thought I... Oh, there's a nice yellow one. That one might, um, might do. So maybe there. Uh, that one maybe. Maybe there. Okay, right, um, just pop those away and let's have a look. I might use one of these ones, I think. Um, maybe that one, pop that there. Now I need something in the middle. Um, I've got one of these ones, these are quite bright. Maybe that one there or that one looking at the spacing maybe that one just cut that out on the background so that I can because it does have a sticker on the back so okay 
Um, now I do kind of have space there, but I don't know. It might be a bit small to... Maybe I might add a couple of little ones towards the very end. Okay, so I think I think that will do for the minute. Just get rid of all of those out of the way so I've got some room to work. Okay, now my first job is I'm going to gesso the page. So I'll do that, dry it, and then we'll work out the butterflies. So just got some scrap paper there and maybe a little bit at the back there so I don't get it all over my board and I'm just going to roll on the gesso I think or well, better not shake it with the okay I'll probably speed this bit up I think too so I'm just using a roller Okay, it's dry. Now the reason I put the gesso on is because the paper's not that thick. I think it was 80, no, I think it might have been 120 GSM, but it's still not very thick. And of course, whenever you add um, a watercolour to normal paper, it, it will um, well wrinkle and the paper, the paint will be absorbed into the paper and so forth. So I'm hoping by putting the gesso, it will give it a little bit of a a barrier between the paint and the paper. Now the paints that I've got, I've got quite a few little of these Prima ones. So what I've done is I've grabbed most of them that have got blue in there and I'm thinking of doing squares of blue. So it's going to be quite a formal background. Um, so now what I'm thinking is to work out where I'm going to put the colours. Uh, now I've got to remember how I had this. I'm just going to put my butterflies back, okay, uh, and I'm going to just with a pencil put a bit of a, a guide as to where my colour's going. So I'm thinking, and I'm hoping I can rub this out actually. not quite gesso up there so that'll be interesting to see how it goes this this sort of technique of the watercolors it was um i did see suzanne rose who does a lot of mixed media stuff this is um one of the things she does sometimes with her with when she's just playing with her watercolors um it's just a sort of a, a background and then she does some doodling on it. Now I've just realised I was going to put this on but I'm just wondering where it's going to fit. Uh, let me just have a look. I move those down, the whole thing down. Maybe I could put it in there. Now I really like the formalness of that. Um, it probably would fit. I can trim it a little bit. Yep, okay. So, in that case, I need to do... Although that could be the same, that's fine. This will be different here. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course, but it's really just a guide. Now, I'm really hoping this works. I really am. Otherwise, you'll never see the video, so... <laughs> Alright, now... Okay, let's get rid of those out the way so they don't end up in a disaster. All right. Okay. Now, um, let me see. I need one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, six blues. Um, okay. So, what have I got? Now, I've got um, quite a few, and I, this one's a uniquely creative. It's. I think it's just a cheaper blue set but I do like the blue in that one so I've got one two three four five and I've also got these these um, I think were Semco shimmery paints which I might use as well okay so let's have a quick look now hopefully this video won't go too long 
excuse the messiness of them but that's how they end up uh, that's quite a dark one this one is it's got a couple there so not sure which one I'll use of those this one's got a nice blue it's got a mist that color mist that you can see that's kind of a nice greeny blue too and the pastel one which I was not convinced I would use I don't think I will I think I might use two of the blues from one of the others so I might pop that to one side okay now I'm going to spray the blues that I want so I definitely want that light blue there I want that blue there I think I might spray both of those I think they might be the two that I use and that one there all right now uh, which one do I want as my main one I might just rub that a little bit better which one I think I like the blueberry actually yep the blueberry which is this one here um, I'll just bring that up a bit which is this one here this is from the decadent pies okay so I've got a couple of different brushes I've got three brushes wasn't sure which size to use they're um, I think they're called mop brushes because they're very very thick with the bristles um, and I'm certainly no expert by any means I've just been playing around so I'm thinking maybe because I'm doing this big area I'll use this bigger one and I'm going to pop some water down because um, I want the water to spread the sorry the paint to spread but on the same token I don't want a huge amount of water either okay so let's have a look I said blueberry didn't I so I'm going to add quite a bit of water to this I don't mind these Prima paints um, I find that they're okay to use okay now I'm just gonna oh no I blocked it onto another one okay okay Sort of want a bit darker in places too all right now i did not bring any cloth but i do have a bit of paper towel so i'll try and grab that off okay now i'm also going to use this lighter blue here from the cheaper paints and i'm just going to do a little one here I think maybe I might need the smaller brush for these, but we'll see. It does work a lot better on um, uh, watercolour paper. Okay, now what have I got? I think I might do a darker one in the middle, so I might actually do... I think I need more colours than I've got. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I do. Okay, where's their two blues here? Okay, I might use the Prussian blue in the middle. And it doesn't matter if there's a bit of um, mixing of the colour. I'm not fussed with that. okay and now I might do the stream from the woodlands I like these the woodland ones they are very um, like a naturey sort of lot really nice colors okay and the good thing with watercolor paints I've noticed <laughs> is you can take a little bit off if it's, if it's too dark Okay, I might speed up for the next two. Um, I've got the Blackberry to use from the Decadent and the London from the Odyssey one. So, right, 
front. I'm just going to spray a little bit of water and see if I can get a bit of mixing of the colours. This is not spraying very well right now. No. Yeah, but another one. Yes, here. Okay, let's just do a bit of this sort of a thing, see what we can do. It's a bit hard when it's all attached, but Okay, now I do have, and I'll just pop those out of the way. Uh, normally I like to let them dry before I close them, but I do have these shimmery ones. I thought I might pop some of the blues over the top. Um, now where's my spray again? Let's see, we've got this blue here. These actually are really quite nice. They weren't expensive either, but they're kind of really nice to put over the top I find of different colours just a little bit here and there just to give it a little bit extra you might not be able to see this on camera just to give it a bit of um, shimmeriness and then I'm going to dry this and hope it uh, looks okay <laughs> there's a lot of water on there right now might just have to mop some of this off here I think it's just a bit much okay I'm going to dry this now and I'll be back all right it's dry um interesting um I quite like it that's sort of what you, it turned out and you can just make out the different colors um, now interesting on the I did get a bit of paint on some of the page but this is what the back of that page looks like so you can see where there was no gesso up the top here and along the edges um, you can see that the paint has kind of I guess colored the page but you can see the majority of it's not so that's what gesso does so you can use normal paper with watercolours as long as you put some gesso. And probably I would recommend a thicker coat than I put. But um, even still, just with rolling it, it's it's not done too bad. Alright, um, I'm just going to pop this through there anyway. Now what I did think was maybe I should do something on the background. Um, but I'm really not sure what. I think I might put an edge to the page um, and I might just do squirrelies or or something just to edge the page um, maybe just a, a hand drawn straightish line it does feel a little damp on the edge there actually but just to give the page some sort of a, a border I find that putting borders on things really helps finish your page. Oops. Okay, so that's that. Um, now let's just have a look. Now I have to cut out a couple of those butterflies too. So it was something like this. Uh, that, that, and that with that there maybe a bit over there maybe that there a little bit yeah that looks better fits better anyway actually I've got a space here so I really could put another butterfly there I think I will um, let's just have a look what we've got another one of those purple ones but I don't really want the same one uh, what's this one? Oh, I don't want the wooden one uh, what about one of these or maybe one of these will that fit let's just have a look if I can open the packet uh, where does it open gosh where does it open it is definitely there oh, there we go that would help all right so um, are they too big could go there I don't know it'll look how it would look against the background. Oh, I think it'll be okay. Actually, ironically, no, maybe that one. 
No, I think I prefer that one. That one. Alright. Well, maybe that one. That one stands out more. Okay, so I'll just cut that out of that. Right. So that'll be there. Okay, so I might distress the edges, cut them out and stick them down and then maybe a little bit of doodling because I'm having to cut the antenna off the butterflies because it's just too hard to cut them sometimes. The bigger ones I, I do but the small ones they're just too fragile when you cut them because it's really incredibly difficult to cut the fine you know fine little bits especially if you've got a thicker piece of um, cardstock or whatever you've printed it onto. I um, have my design team for scrapbooking and crafts thing to do next, um, which I've got an idea. As soon as I saw it, I had an idea for it. Um, I haven't quite got the courage up to start it yet, though. And Melinda does send a couple of extras. Um, you know, she just she doesn't send one, thank goodness, because you do have a bit of leeway then in case you do mess it up or something. So um, yeah, I really need to bite the bullet, as they say, and get started on it. Um, I'm running out of time, <laughs> actually. Um, it will be done on time, but <laughs> yeah, I'm a little reluctant to start it actually. I, I think I really need to get my head around what I'm actually doing, and I'm not going to say what I'm actually doing, I'll leave it as a surprise. Um, and it should, I hope it really works, I think it will. Whether, of course, it works out as well as my head, you know, has planned it is another thing. Um, you know a lot of the time the thing I have in my head it doesn't always work out how I want it sometimes it actually works out better um, not always <laughs> but um, you know I guess I like to um, I like to experiment too so sometimes I get part way through something and go oh I think this would work better now, I don't know how I'm going to do that one with distressing the edges but anyway Okay, now gluing. I think I'll use my um, art glitter glue. Alright, now we'll start with the bottom ones. So I need to get the placement correct on these. Oh, I'm really, I really like this. Maybe I should swap that one for that one actually. Which one's taller? No, that one's taller. Okay. How is everyone going with these prompts? I hope that um, you're going good with them and finding them fun. Uh, that's the main idea, to find them fun. Um, also to use up some of your supplies, to play around, try things that you don't normally try. That's also fun. And of course there's a few that you're using things that you probably haven't used for a while as well, which is always good. You know, we buy all these things, we go through phases where we use them a lot. Uh, and then we don't use them again for a while. And they end up sitting in your, your stash and or taking up space. And, you know, you really need to use them to justify having them, I guess. Sometimes it can inspire other projects too. Maybe I should have done that butterfly under there. Yep. All right. I'm wondering whether I should use a craft glue actually. Our glue to glue should stick them, but um, so 
sometimes it's a matter of just holding them down for a few minutes to uh, really get them to stick. Now this one's a sticker as far as I know, but I might just pop a little bit of glue on the parts that's not going to show, just to make sure. Okay, and the last couple. And this one's a sticker with, actually I'm going to take off that little three-dimensional bit and use some glue. Mm, lots of glue on that one. Alright, and where's my paper towel gone? Okay, oops. Alright. Yeah, it's a little buckly, but that will, um, once it's in the book, it will flatten out. Okay, let's see. Uh, what can I do that will just give it a little bit extra? I'm just wondering whether some gold would be nice. Um, don't really have a nice gold marker. I've got several, but to me, they're never really gold gold. I might pop the lid on that. This one is the Pigment Gold Signo Uniball uh, with a bit of scrap. Okay, um, I might just go over these. Maybe I could put some stars so that those the stars on this uh, match the stars on this. A little different to see them, I think, actually. Okay. Now I did have to do, that reminded me, some antenna. I'll just pop those back. happy with that. So that is my butterfly page. Yeah I'm happy with that actually. I think it came out really well and I'm really happy that I got to use that and happy that I used some of the butterflies that I've been collecting as well. Now that's just a little crooked. I wonder if I can... no it's too late. Rats. Never mind. Okay so that's my butterfly page. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.